I've always been uh, like a, a dreamer. I've always had, it seems like God's, most of my life, God's spoken to me mostly through dreams and visions. I had this dream a couple of weeks back about a friend of mine in Georgia. Uh, this girl, a little bit younger than me, she's like a, a little sister. And uh, in the dream, <clears throat> I was standing on this beach and it looked like one of the beaches in, in New Jersey. It was overcast. Uh, and there were lots of people on the beach, kind of a scattered crowd, and was kind of just standing there looking at the people. And in the middle of this crowd, my friend comes. So I, can, I can't hear anything in the dream, but I can see her mouth move and I can see her face. And she starts yelling, but it wasn't out of anger, like it was more out of frustration in, in the dream. And once she does this, she... Uh, she pulls out a gun and kills herself. So I wake up and um, that whole day at work, I was kind of struggling with going, you know, what, what was this about? And so I started kind of praying and, you know, asking God what, what it was about, if there was any, anything specific. And I kind of felt like I needed to, to contact her, whether it was, you know, a message, text message or something. I struggled that whole day because for me, having those dreams and visions, like, like a lot of people, I struggle with knowing if it was me coming up with this idea, if it was just, you know, a random dream. So I, that whole day, I, I never called, never texted her. So then Tuesday, I woke up, go into the office, and as soon as I sit down, as soon as I get on my computer, I message her and something to the effect of, you know, hey, are, are you doing okay? And she's kind of starts sharing some stuff with me, you know, her and her dad are, were somewhat estranged and it seems like there's kind of a situation where there might be some reconciliation between them two uh, but it there were some other things going on in her life that were, were pretty heavy and she asked you know why so I, I just told her I said yeah I had this dream about you that was it was pretty disturbing but um, I said yeah I just wanted to you know message you contact you and just check and see how you were doing see if there was you know, anything that you needed to talk about or get off your chest, anything you needed help with or something. And later that afternoon, she texts me and she says, hey, well, can I ask what the, the dream was about? And I was kind of reluctant. I was like, yeah, you know, it was, it was kind of disturbing. I don't know if I want to share it with you. I mean, I, I don't know anybody who would really want to hear a dream like that about them. She said, no, I, I, would, I would really like to know what it, what it was about. So I, I tell her the dream. And she told me that, <clears throat> that that weekend, a lot of the bad things that had been going on, a lot of the heavy stuff had kind of come to a head and that she really felt like she had hit a rock bottom and <clears throat> that she had even started contemplating, you know, taking her own life and feeling like that that was a solution to the stuff that she had been dealing with. And... Um, and of course, you know, we, we talked and I prayed for her and, and continue to pray for her. And, um, but I started thinking that, you know, the last, the last seven years of my life have been some of the, the toughest years I've, I've had to face. And there was definitely a moment for me where I, can, I can't necessarily pinpoint the moment. I can pinpoint kind of the season during that time where I feel like I, I hit rock bottom. And when you go through those moments, when you go through those wilderness moments, they're not just for the sake of going through that. You always learn from it. And when I was going through my time, <clears throat> I asked, you know, the immature question of why me? And uh, the friend I was talking to, I was confiding in said, you know, well, why not you? He said, you know, somebody eventually has to go through the fire to be able to help other people either navigate through it or navigate around it. And I've had other opportunities to share the stuff that I've gone through and, and it's ministered to people, kind of help them with their situation. But I realized with this one that that moment of hitting rock bottom, I could totally relate to where she was. And it just, it gave me an opportunity <clears throat> to be able to share with her and not only sympathize, but to be able to empathize with her and let her know that there was at least someone who God was kind of, you know, touching and saying, hey, check on, check on her, you know. One of the thoughts that I had had for, my, for myself when I was going through, through my hard times, or just the most recent hard times, um, 
and with her was the idea of hitting rock bottom. And then the idea of, you know, when you're, when you're trying to dig a foundation, typically you dig down to the bedrock, you dig down to rock bottom so that you can build up from there so that the foundation is a lot more stable. And as cliche as it might sound that, you know, God is our rock, that he is, he, that he can actually be our rock bottom, that it doesn't have to be this end of the road, but that it can be something that, that he uses for, not only for us to build on, but for him to build on in us and through us as well, to become a foundation that is more stable because it is built on that rock. And it's something that can be continuously built upon and built upon until it does become, you know, an even greater witness for him and for the things that he's done in our individual lives, you know. My name is Brandon Thompson and I'm a one person movement.